Thanks for tuning into No Wine in No Time. I'm your host Dave, and today we're coming to you live from the small town of Palaia here in Tuscany. And no trip to Tuscany, Italy would be complete without talking about Sangiovese. And Sangiovese is Italy's most widely planted grape in the entire country, and really the king of Tuscany. Now the word Sangiovese has its roots firmly in Roman culture, and the ancient Romans thought that the wine itself resembled the blood of Jupiter, so the word sanguis, hovis, or sangiovese became the ultimate name. Now sangiovese is the main ingredient in many Tuscan red wines that I'm sure you're familiar with, things like Chianti and Chianti Classico and the king of all Tuscan reds, Brunello di Montecino. So, first documented in the 1500s, Sangiovese-based wines are just slightly lighter in color due to the lower anthocyanins and also phenolic compounds in the grapes themselves. So when we think about the tannin level, Sangiovese-based wines have medium to higher tannin levels and higher than normal acid content. So let's go ahead and give one a try and see what we think. So this particular one is from Borgio Cipressi and this is a Brunello di Montecino. So when we think about Brunello di Montecino, this is 100% Sangiovese from the town of Montalcino, and these wines are aged significantly prior to release. So a normal Brunello di Montecino like we have here has been aged a minimum of three years, two of which is normally in oak. So these tend to be mature wines. Now the word Brunello actually means brown wine. So the Brunello di Montecino is the brown wine from the town of Montalcino. And if we look at the color, we notice because of the significant aging, we can actually see a little bit of browning around the edges, a slightly bricky color to this wine. So let's swirl it and check the aromas. When we smell this wine, we notice that this wine is gonna be significantly more mature. It has aromas of cedar, cherry, a little bit of tobacco, slight bit of licorice and some herbalness to the wine. So let's go ahead and taste the wine. Wow, this particular Brunello di Montecino packs quite a complex punch. When it rolls on the front of the palate, we taste some cherries, and then mid palate we can feel the tannins starting to build and all along it's balanced by a significant acidic stripe, but everything is in perfect harmony. The finish on this wine is a little bit of um, kind of granddad's old pipe tobacco uh, with a little bit of uh, fresh leather mixed in there as well. So a very beautiful wine, very, very mature, and uh, certainly worth a try. Now if this Brunello di Montecino happened to be a Reserva, then by laws, the Reserva wine would have to be aged five years prior to release. So, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this Brunello. That's all the time we have today. And please tune in next time, and soon you'll know wine in no time.